All right, so this is my mid-year review. I just wanted to have like an honest documentation of everything that I've gone through in 2019 so far. June is a really important month for me. It's when that I have a birthday, so it's a perfect halfway point for me to just go back and assess. So let's start off with January. I started the year in the same place that I am now, which is Sarasota, Florida. And I started the year with my best friend, Yanelli who is actually here right now and she is giving me moral support because I'm very nervous about making my first video. So that is friendship goals right there. Thank you, check mark. So I'm going to insert some photos here of our time hanging out in Sarasota. I live in New York, so it's so nice to just be able to come to Florida twice a year, spend time with my family and friends and just enjoy some warm weather and get a break from the cold. So I flew back to New York shortly after and the second thing that I did was go to the Metropolitan Museum with my friend Aurora. So that was just like a nice transition back to city life. Then in January, I went to Washington DC and met up with my friend Delfina and I met one of her friends, Glenn, and we went to the Indigenous Peoples March. At the march, we met Roxanne White, who is a powerful speaker and advocate for missing and murdered indigenous women. Rosanna Strong, say her name! Rosanna Strong. Leona Kinsley, say her name! Leona Kinsley. Alyssa McLemore, say her name! Alyssa McLemore. Olivia Lomer, say her name! Olivia Lomer. Ashley Heavy Brother Lori, say her name! After that, when we went to, to the Women's March, we actually ran into her. It's not about my faith, it's not even about my name. It's about our relatives that are not here, that no longer have a voice, that haven't been given the opportunity in their family to, to be seen. At the same time that Delfina had managed to get us backstage press passes, for the Women's March. Um, so we had our press badges and then as soon as we saw Roxanne White, we gave them to her and stood outside in the cold in January for several hours in order to ensure that Roxanne White was able to ultimately close the Women's March with prayer and also to advocate for the missing and murdered indigenous women. Another highlight of the DC trip was seeing Superman perform. <laughs> It was MLK Day. I went and listened to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez speak. That was really important because she's someone in politics that I've become really interested in. And just to be able to see her in action and see her charisma and her confidence and her power in person was very important to me. Towards the very end of January, I started my semester at Hunter College. I'm a student there. In February, I continued protesting. I went to the Municipal Detention Center in Brooklyn. That week had reached record low temperatures and the inmates had no hot water, no electricity, no heat, no visitation rights, um, and were not receiving access to their medication. The people that were in that jail, a lot of them had never been convicted of a crime. They just hadn't uh, been able to afford to post bail. I was very upset by this. The inmates banging on the windows to get people's attention and communicate with us on the outside and to try to explain through like knocking basically that they needed help. They're yelling. They're yelling for help. Um, I'm really glad I went out there and was able to just be a part of that until um, the conditions improved. <laughs> and then it was fashion week. My friend Elise came to visit me from California. Um, she is a model and by her graces, I was able to go to a few events and watch her and support her in her career. We ended up going to the Alexander Wang after party. It was a lot of fun. We saw Trina perform, um, ASAP Ferg, and also one of the members of City Girls. And then it was Valentine's Day. Um, my ex came home from work like pretty early in the morning, maybe like 5 a.m. and immediately set to work and like creating this like cute little 
Valentine's Day surprise for me. And that was really sweet because we were going through a breakup at the time, but that kind of solidified that like we were always going to be good and the love that we share is always going to be there. And then at my school, we had an art show. Art students decided to like take the initiative. I had a painting that was displayed. Then I had my first critique. And then my friend Glenn, who I met at the Indigenous Peoples March, actually at the end of February invited me to a flamethrower party. Yes, this is epic now. In March, I moved apartments. I ended up moving into a brownstone with a friend from school. And I'll do like a little tour of my apartment when I get back to Brooklyn. So after that, I was still, you know, working really hard at school um, and I made this Frida Kahlo painting. And the reason for the painting was because at the same time, the Brooklyn Museum had an exhibit on Frida Kahlo's work and life. And everyone kept coming up to me and asking me, have you seen Frida yet? Have you seen the Frida exhibit? Are you going to go see Frida? And my response to that was consistently no. So when I ended up in critique with Laurie Simmons, who is this amazing artist who I really admired for everything that she did to break ground as a female photographer in the art world. So she came and she asked me, okay, why? Like, why won't you go? And I, because I was explaining all this in critique. And I put it very bluntly, I don't think that anyone of Mexican descent should have to pay money to an institution to go see a Frida Kahlo exhibit. And I had been trying for months to get free tickets, um, just based on principle, because I didn't think it was fair that the rest of the, the museum was free, but then to go see Frida, like, even with a student discount, it was $16 a ticket. So that definitely, like, cuts out, like, a whole group of people that like maybe can't afford that right now and were not able to go. So I didn't want to become part of that either. So I was working really hard to get tickets and was not able to do so by any means at all until I had this critique. So Lori ended up hooking us up with 15 free tickets to go see Frida. During spring break, I ended up taking a group of students to go see it and that was awesome because I know a lot of students would have missed the exhibit otherwise. So that was a really fun moment and made like just opened my eyes up to like what the power of, of storytelling can unfold and like how empowering like painting has become for me as an activist and as someone who wants to see change in this world. I had another major critique. My professor told me to bring it. And so I literally brought all of the paintings that I was proud of from the past two years and I put them up. And that was really amazing for me to see all of my progress. I stopped traveling, I stopped going out, I kind of killed my social life uh, in order to focus on school full time. Basically my whole life was school at this point. I'd get up at 8 o'clock in the morning and then would stay at school till 10 or 11 o'clock at night, sometimes staying till 3 or 4 in the morning when needed. So in April, because we had so much success with the pop-up art show, we decided to organize a second one called Pop-Up Squared. And that was just so much fun to put together. Um, we made posters, we started selecting the artists, we made these giant signs. I was actually at school till three o'clock in the morning one day with a colleague of mine. And we, I mean, it was my crazy idea, but he was so nice and like went along with it. Um, we made giant signs to promote the show because we were so excited.
At Hunter, unfortunately, at the undergraduate level, there is no space for students to show their artwork. So we wanted to take this opportunity and really run with it. We had a zero dollar budget because our school was not supporting us. So since we had no money at all, we literally just made our signs out of cut out newspaper, but I think they turned out pretty good. Unfortunately, our school, for reasons that I will get into in another video, like it's just so complicated at this point. So the school was not in support of this effort at all. We were very surprised when within 24 hours of the signs going up, we had to take them down because the school did not want us to have the show and they actually canceled it. After that, it was spring break and so we went to go see the Frida Kahlo exhibit. Like I mentioned earlier, that was really fun. And you're not, you weren't supposed to like take photos. There's actually guards in the museum that would yell at you if you try to take a photo of anything in the exhibit. So I very sneakily like took photos. You know, is in the back here cracking up. I had my phone like this and I had like my sketchbook. So I was like literally like going like this everywhere, like taking photos. <laughs> that is so you, that's your new trademark. Right, yeah. the stealth, the stealth photo. <laughs> Right? And I also took some stealth selfies, too. <laughs> in May is usually the Met Gala. Um, I don't know if you follow that or not, but the Met Gala is like a fundraiser that the Metropolitan Museum has every year in which they invite a bunch of celebrities to come flex on the red carpet. We gotta go, Katie. What? We gotta go. Hi, J-Lo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? If you've seen this video of Katy Perry, you've seen the inside of Hunter College because this video was taken at my school. My school decided to rent the gym to Gucci to throw an after party. And I was so upset by this that I made a whole other video at school in order to talk about this and why it's actually a problem. Wow, that's the nicest our gym has looked in years. Rich people really know how to shake things up. I wonder if these A-listers can work some of their celebrity magic on the rest of the school. We could really use some star power. Administration has been ignoring these problems for years, and students don't know why. Without any solutions in sight, we are turning to you, the general public, and celebrities to please help us fix Hunter College. And then at the end of May, I applied for the BFA program. The BFA program is actually pretty hard to explain because my school does it differently than most other accredited colleges. And our BFA, which is normally done in four years at any other institution, is actually a fifth year program. And it's by invitation only. It's not like a, a scholarship or something like that. It's literally just like the basic degree for my field. This past semester it was very competitive and so it was really difficult to compete against all of my friends. We knew that there were limited spots and so it was it was a very tough challenge. I got the small painting studio to kind of transform into my space. So that's my blanket. Here's some like little ones. My image list. Artist statement. The night before, I was up on this ladder, like changing all of the lights in the ceiling, overcoming my fear of heights in order to get everything to look just right. Unfortunately, I was not accepted into this program, which is absolutely heartbreaking. I was totally devastated and upset and confused because I knew I had worked so hard and I really wanted this and I thought that I had delivered 
at least to my ability, the best work that I could have created at that time. And I still stand by that. I'm so proud of the work that I did, even though I wasn't accepted. The one good thing about all of this is that all of my friends that applied, they actually got in. And so I'm so happy for everyone that applied and got in. And I'm so excited to see what they make in the program and how they develop. And so for me, my next step now is to reapply and hopefully the second time I will be accepted. So moving on from that, I dried my tears and just made uh, the best effort that I could to have like a really positive ending. The end of the year, my friends and I at school got together and we finally, through all of this hard work and push back, were able to get a final art show up and running at Hunter College. Um, our school was fighting us the entire time. We did not pay any mind to that. What we were doing was positive, empowering, and a great way to just kind of celebrate all of our work and especially celebrate the BFA candidates that were accepted into the program. We had our end of the year show, summer assembly. It was really fun and that's kind of it. I had a lot of fun and a lot of like really emotional ups and downs this past semester and half of 2019 and I'm just so excited to move forward and just see where I go from here.